Today's video is sponsored by Simply Safe. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I cannot believe Halloween is right around the corner. We are entering October short and I thought to myself, I need to film a DIY Halloween decor video this year. I didn't do one last year. I think I was in the process of just making over the house. I really wasn't decorating like too intensely last year for holidays. And this year Halloween just feels like the vibe. I wanna create some Halloween decor. I wanna put it around the house just to amplify it a little bit. But of course, DIY decor is my absolute favorite. These are not like your five minute crafts DIYs. These these are elevated, I would like to say. So if you agree as well at the end of watching this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It helps out the channel. These are not gonna break the bank. They are cost effective. Every single supply I use in this video, I'm also gonna link below for you. I purchased them all on Amazon. But if you are someone that does not like to DIY your holiday decor, I have an online shop called Lone Fox and it is fully stocked right now with a fall collection that has so many cute pieces for Halloween, for Thanksgiving, just decorating your house for the fall times. If you haven't checked that out yet, I haven't even mentioned it yet, it is live but also feel free to make your own decor. That is why I'm making this video. So let's go ahead and dive on into our first project. The way that this first project turned out so much, we are going to be creating some wire spider webs using some floral wire in black, and then these are also floral wire strips that are pre cut. But the thing I love about these is they create a really nice base. They're a little bit thicker than the other wire that's on the roll here, but I am going to pull the wire off the roll and use this for the actual kind of rings created around the spider web. But I'm going to start by just wrapping some of that wire around four pieces of the stiff straight wire. I don't even know what to call this, our base wire. Let's call it our base wire. So I wrapped it around and then I kind of just flared out all of them to create eight little spokes. And as you can see here, I'm kind of just wrapping the wire around each of the strands just a little out from the center section there. I'm wrapping it just one time around and the wire is going to be able to hold its shape, of course. So as I'm going, I'm just wrapping once around each strand. And once you have your first complete wrap around all of them, it is going to be so much easier. The first one's always the hardest because you're kind of like prepping each strand to stay in place but once you have your first set and your first round completely done like this it's going to be so much easier so then I just go along and do the second set and I just brought the wire up one of our base strands and then started the second set like maybe half an inch away or so but you can really kind of gauge wherever you want to do that and I only did three kind of wrap arounds or three rings in my spider web for all of them um, here I am a little bit closer so you guys can see but I basically started off with four of our base pieces wrapped it around the center and then flared them out and then I'm wrapping around our first set of wire which is going to be our first ring just wrapping it once around each of our base strands and I feel like the more messy that this gets the kind of cuter that it looks I wish I also bought a couple of spider beads like little black spider beads because I could have added them on as I went which I think would have been so cute as well but here you could see it actually moves very quick I thought this was gonna be a very like laborious process to make a bunch of these for my branches but I spent maybe 20 minutes and I made about seven of these spider webs so it really went by quickly and I think if you haven't done this before you'd kind of like initially think to just keep spiraling the wire around so just kind of working in a spiral but what really creates the spider web shape is bringing the wire up each time you create a new ring. So you bring it up the base strand and then you start a new row. So here I have a branch just literally from outside. I cut this off of a tree. I kind of looked for something that was a little bit more spooky, a little bit more dead vibes. So this had some falling leaves on it. And I just wanted to share with you how I was wrapping these spider webs. I kind of just found an open section and added the spider web into it, which looks so freaking cool. But then I decided to actually style all my branches in the pot that they were gonna be going in. And then I added my spider web so you can visually see them them all kind of up front so I wasn't like randomly selecting where they were going and this is how it ended up looking. I also added a couple of crows I found on Amazon. I think these are so cute for Halloween. I just love how I created a little wire spider and the spider webs, they turned out so cute, added to the branches. This was such an affordable and easy project and I also feel like it kind of stems on the realm of cutesy as opposed to spooky. October is always a month of things that are scary and do not worry, we have some scary projects coming up shortly. But something you don't have to be scared about is your security and your home security. If you get yourself a Simply Safe home security system because I have one, I've had one for many years. If you've been watching my channel, you would know that I just adore my Simply Safe. It just gives me so much peace 
peace of mind, especially going into the holidays because people know that you're gonna start having gifts around Christmas time. So getting yourself geared up for the holiday season is incredible. And setting up your system is truly a no brainer. It comes with every entry sensor that you need. You can totally customize it for your space as well, but they have entry sensors, advanced sensors and cameras to detect threats from break-ins, fires, floods and more. I was able to set mine up in under an hour and I was genuinely having fun with the process because everything was connecting up so seamlessly. I was like, how is this working so well? But that's truly what it is. It is a home security system shipped directly to your doorstep, made super simple to install yourself, keeps you safe and all around it is a no brainer when it comes to home security. Especially since getting my puppy Winston, I've installed a few more HD cameras in my home just to make sure that I'm able to see him when I'm away and their app makes it so easy to track and look at your cameras from really anywhere in the world. So if you two would like to easily add that extra layer of protection, definitely take advantage of Simply Safe's offer. You can save 50% off your Simply Safe security system plus a free indoor security camera when you sign up for a core monitoring plan and you get your first month for free. Visit simplysafe.com/lonefox to customize yours. There's no safe like Simply Safe. I've been seeing a bunch of these creepy cloth ghosts created lately, and I think they are so cute, so I actually wanted to create some own for my own holiday decor, so I got this creepy cloth online. I will link it for you guys, but you can also get it from the dollar store. Then I also got some balloons, and I just had this sheet of black felt on hand, so I started off by blowing up a couple of balloons, and the balloon size is going to be dependent on how big your ghost is, and you really don't want to make these too large. I will say that I probably made mine the largest they can be. I probably should have done them just a little bit smaller, and then I went ahead and cut a good amount of the creepy cloth for the ghosts that I wanted to create. So this is about three layers added together. And for each of these ghosts, I actually used an entire bottle of Elmer's glue, but this is just a dollar from the dollar store. And I thought it was a lot, but then I figured, you know what? People make slime and they're like mixing gallons of Elmer's glue with stuff. So I feel like it's fine. We used one bottle of Elmer's glue with a little bit of water just to kind of stretch it a little bit longer. And it also makes it absorb into the creepy cloth better. So I definitely suggest getting some gloves, kind of squishing it, making sure that you're like massaging it all into the cloth because really the only step in this entire process is just now wrapping this over the top of the balloon and kind of creating the shape of a ghost and I noticed a lot of people cut the bottom of theirs after they were done so it was like a perfect shape but I really love the organic look of having some of it not touching the bottom so kind of almost letting the creepy cloth's little legs and it just almost elevates some of the other cloth areas and just gives it this very nice flowy draped texture. As you can see here, I think it looks really nice for a ghost and you are going to let this dry fully overnight. I am going to go ahead and create another one. I ended up creating three and I actually ended up trying Mod Podge for one, but I will say that the Mod Podge version did not turn out and I would definitely recommend using the Elmer's glue with just a little bit of water um, just because the water just lets it absorb into the cloth a bit better. And something else I'll say too is that these are not going to be decor pieces you're going to use year after year after year. These are a little bit more on the fragile side, so it's something you might create per season, but they're really fun and easy to make. And as you can see there, I just popped the balloon the following day. It comes right out. This is what our ghosts look like. They are standing up by themselves, and I love how the cloth is a little bit see-through, so it kind of adds this transparent feel to the ghost. I cut out some eyes out of felt, and I just glued them on in a little oval shape, and that is how I finished off these little ghosts. Next up, we are creating some bloody taper candles, and I love how these turned out. I will say that they do kind of look bloody, so if you do not like that, you might want to skip past this project, but I actually covered up a taper holder in a paper towel, but I will say you should use tin foil. Don't use a paper towel. I lit my paper towel on fire. Oh, the, the paper towel's on fire. But don't you worry, I learned my lesson. Um, and yeah, so basically all you are going to do is I actually bought these wax seal sticks. These are for creating wax seals on envelopes. And I thought this would be the easiest way to add little red drips. I also thought it was cute because it has a bit of shimmer in it. So it just adds a little bit more of like a playful vibe. The color is also stunning. It's like this super dark red, which I think contrasts so nicely with the white. And what you're going to do is just drip the wax over the top. You can create however much you want, however little you'd like like and I kind of feel like these are taper candles that you more so would not burn however you totally could because I do feel like they'd organically drip in kind of like a 
bloody esque fashion. That was, I think, where I lit the paper towel on fire. But as you could see, I just repeatedly dripped this candle wax right on top. The thing is, is that it actually just stays ignited itself. So it drips as it goes. That's like the purpose of these actual wax seal sticks. And once I added a whole bunch of them, I ended up popping these candles into an affordable candelabra, which I'll also link for you. It's from Amazon. It comes in a set of two. I created a black candle too with the red and it looks so, so good. But the candelabra filled with five of these candles is just such a statement. I think it's so cool for Halloween and I love how this turned out. to save my favorite project for last. We are creating the Hocus Pocus book out of a storage book box. I got this on Amazon. I'll link it for you guys below. Here is a photo of the Hocus Pocus book. We are going to be creating our very own version. And you guys, I kind of think mine looks better than the one from the movie. I'm not even kidding. Okay, this movie is so nostalgic for me. It came out when I was like 13. I've seen it every year since. I'm starting off with a little doll eye that I placed on there. I got this on Amazon too. I'll link it for you guys, all the supplies. And then I'm using a Sharpie just to kind of trace out where I want to add my layers of hot glue because we're going to be building up the base of this book in order to really customize it and give it that texture on a budget or like projects like this you would be creating molds for and it'd be a whole process but we just want to like build up and sculpt our own from hot glue so I am starting off by adding a whole bunch of hot glue around the eyeball just like within that eye shape and then on either side of the line so on either side of all of these black lines on the front I'm adding a bead of hot glue on the left and the right side with leaving the black part of the line open in the middle. If you could imagine, we're going to be kind of creating these sutures or like little stitches connecting over the top of each of these. So I really want this to almost appear like a rip when we're done. So that's why I left a little opening. And you can see as the hot glue starts to dry down, you can almost see more of where I'm actually placing it. It goes on clear, but then as it dries, you could see more of its actual texture. And on the spine here, I'm just doing like a big chunky layer of hot glue all along the edge there. And then here's where I'm going in with the little stitches. So I'm just doing stitch lines across and attaching all of the lines together. This is just what I felt was easiest. I had no rhyme or reason when doing this. I just followed some reference photos and kind of did whatever I wanted, but I felt like the more stitches I added, the more kind of detail I added in. Once I went to the actual painting process and we added in those highlights, that was when everything was going to come to life. And honestly, I just kept on going, adding stitches across the hot glue. Some of them I created little X shaped stitches so it kind of like mixed up the variation of stitch work and then I also went back to the eyeball I kept on building up the eye area I probably did that about three or four different layers to the eyeball area um, because I wanted that to be the thickest and then I went in with some black paint and covered up all of our hot glue areas with the black paint just so it didn't look white to start and let me tell you guys right now I am not an artist or a painter by any means at all I do not think I'm good at art in any way shape or form this is more of like a mixed media fun project so this I feel like anyone can do you guys it's really not hard um, you can get away with a lot especially with this kind of like scary looking book it's not like we're going for a perfect finish in the end so I added a little bit of red and orange paint and then I'm kind of messed it up with this white paint I don't know why I added that in but you know what we live and we learn so then I went in and in between the kind of suture areas and in between I guess where that black line was initially drawn I added in some dark red paint just to kind of emulate almost like a bloody effect and I went all the way around stippled that in I felt like I was channeling like my inner special effects makeup artist as I was doing this which I was kind of living and loving and here's where everything comes to life is adding the rub and buff rub and buff is essentially like a gold kind of dry-esque paint if that makes sense and you kind of just like rub it over the top and it just highlights everything this is where all the stitches come to life and this is why you don't need much like expertise with painting because a lot of this process that makes it come to life is finger painting to be honest with you so I'm going over the top of all of our stitch work all of our little accents and just look at how immediately this just pops like it's instant I didn't have to do too much to get like such a cool effect in the end I even added some silver rub and buff on the left side here so I mixed a little silver 
silver, a little gold, which I also feel like kind of transitions the look of it. It makes it feel a little bit more thought out. And I went back in with a little bit of black to dole down some of that gold and silver because in some areas it was just a little too shiny still. And I just love how this project turned out. As I added the highlights to it, I couldn't believe how incredible it popped. Like all that hot glue really worked wonders in this project and it was not hard, so forgiving as well. And I feel like anyone could recreate this. Plus you can open it up and store things inside. So I think it's a perfect book for a coffee table for your remotes and coasters. concludes this little DIY Halloween decor video. And if you feel like you did not get your fix of DIY Halloween decor, I will go ahead and pop up another video in a card up here. This is the one I created two years ago, but the projects are so cute. They are still completely up to date. Like you can still make them and they'd look great in your home. So that's another video that I created. And let me know if you guys would like to see a decorating for Halloween video. I kind of was just planning on doing a decorating for fall because during the Halloween time, I sort of just placed like a couple elements here and there, such as the DIYs I created here and some of the accents I have over on my online shop. I have a bunch of the taper candles throughout my home. I purchased a big box of the decor myself because I'm going to use that in my fall decorating video. So make sure to grab some of that before it starts to sell out. Let me know in the comment section below which of these DIYs was your favorite and if you are going to be recreating any of them. I still cannot believe that I set that paper towel on fire. It was completely on accident and I've learned my lesson. I will catch you in my next one. And if you'd like to take advantage of Simply Safe's offer, definitely click the link at the top of the description box below. Yeah, I think that's all for now and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye guys.